Hello, guys. Welcome to another episode of Xiao Talk Show. So today's topic is random. If you don't know already, Xiao Talk Show is mostly talking about programming, live coding, programming languages, design, and sometimes random. Okay. So today is random. So if you have questions, comments, post it here now. Okay. And、uh, pay me. Okay. PayPal or Patreon or、uh, you can use Super Chat. So if you are here, say hi. Okay,、uh, you know if you are watching offline, then you know play in speed one point five or some something. So because I'm going to be chatty and slow. Okay, so I'm using Emacs. Let me show you today's、uh, you know the keyboard I'm using. So okay, so this is Glove eighty. I had I have like fifty minutes review about a month or two ago. On YouTube, okay, on YouTube, and and I'm also also on Odyssey. Hello, Huang. So, uh, Glove eighty keyboard, fantastic. And I started to program it. Let me show you. I'm gonna show you, okay. Uh, Glove eighty, fantastic. Glove eighty. So search for Xali Glove eighty review. You'll find it. There's also a one hour video review. And on the this keyboard, this is Ultimate Hacking keyboard. It's also fantastic, and I'm using it as a keyboard marker. For example, I press this key, is switch to last window. Okay, fantastic. And、uh, for example, I go to the browser, and I press these two keys. Uh, okay, you cannot see my browser, but you will switch. You know, it's all keyboard markers. So that's about my keyboard and Logitech. Uh, G. Five one twelve, I believe that's my mouse. The spin wheel is fantastic. You can just spin it; it'll spin for twenty seconds or thirty seconds. So that's my setup. So let's switch to the topic, so you can see. Okay, so comments and questions. Okay, so let me talk about uh, some. Uh, let's start with keyboards. Random. Okay, you direct what I talk. You know, ask me questions. So glove AT is this keyboard.、Um, Wait,、uh, cancel, cancel. I want magnify the screen so you can see. I have full reviews and there's a video review there, and so I've been using it for over a month now. It's fantastic. I got my new key switch and I started to program it. So for example, this key, it says shift there, but for me it's tab. It's actually tab. Okay, so you can program the keyboard. It's programmable. So let me go to the.、Uh, let me tell you. So watch my video, okay? So you got full review of it.、Uh, but let me tell you about the programmability, okay? So new experience.、Uh, you can connect to up to four, four or five Bluetooth keyboards, battery.、Uh, you know. So anyway, so let me just jump to something new. So I program the keyboard, keyboard firmware. So programming the keyboard that means you can remap any keys to any other keys you want. You can have several layers. It's the keyboard firmware is ZMK,、uh, open source software. Okay, and it's the most powerful. It's you know similar to QMK. I believe it's a fork originally, but anyway, ZMK is the one that allows you to have Bluetooth. And that's also what Kinesis 360 Pro. You know, Kinesis 360 is a new keyboard. Let me show you. Okay, so you can see you have Glove eighty.、Uh, you know, those I have thumb up. Those are fantastic. I recommend these. Okay, which one to choose depends on you because they differ in price. They differ in weight, in portability, in two piece or one piece. You know it. There's no one single best keyboard. Depends on your preferences. You know whether you you know, and some are Bluetooth, some are not. You know, for example, I prefer wired for my desktop. At least, of course, I also need wired Bluetooth. In fact,、uh, but you know, so anyway, depends on your preferences. Those、uh, thumb up are good ones. Club eighty, Kinesis Advantage two, and Kinesis Kinesis three sixty three sixty. There are two versions. One is Bluetooth, one is wired. Okay, so the Kinesis three sixty, the Bluetooth one is also using K,、uh, ZMK, what it, which is what Glove eighty uses. Okay, so those are great.、Uh, and the 
and expos is I highly recommend to uh, very much. I have three expos now. I gave it. I gave one away. Uh, yeah. Uh, and there's Apple Maker. Okay, so these are good. Some you know, those are the keyboard I recommend. So ZMK. So let's go back to uh, Glove eighty now. So my my view of this keyboard is fantastic. It's one of the best. Okay, you know I can't say which one is exactly the best. Like I said, it depends on. But anyway, it's it depends on you. You know your preferences on many subtle things. But I but this is I would consider uh, one of the top three or two well depending on whether you like curved ball then if you do then it's top three among these three i would say okay so anyway so glove 80 so but there's a flaw okay yeah <laughs> i must say so to program the keyboard is the software is not uh intuitive i heard that you know the zm zmk on kinesis 360 pro is worse okay so anyways if you want bluetooth and you, if you want this kind of curved keyboard, this is probably the best you get. Okay, so, so let me talk about the programming. Yeah, so the programming part, you know, to remap the keys, you can also create macros, key macros. Like for example, for example, I press these two. So I, uh, actually, I didn't program this one, but, but for example, this is this is a demonstration of key macro. So I press this key to go back to previous tab, and this key next tab. Previous tab, next tab, next, 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 previous, previous. You know, it's a fantastic. So you can program your key to do key macro. So let's go back. Um, yeah, and you can do remap. For example, this key is tab. Uh, so, so my point here. But however, to program it is a bit tedious. Okay, a little bit tedious comparatively compared to, for example, there are today there are many. Um, you know, for example, the vial software uh, used by Expose, which is a user interface to the QMK. Th those are extremely easy to program. Okay, so let me show you. So for example, I, I also program this key to be Windows key. So right now I have uh, I have Windows sticky key on. So I just, you know, I don't, you know, so anyway, so, so for example, via software, it's one of the best user interface. Okay, now you you are looking at it. No devices connected. Okay, I don't have my Xbox plugged in right now, so that's why you see empty. Uh, so and also the ultimate hacking keyboard. For example, I can also show it to you. Uh, UHK agent. Okay. So for example, you can see my keyboard macros, you know, these are my keyboard macros. Extremely easy to program. So, you know, you can click this key, you can, it, you, if you want it to be a key press, for example, this key, right now it's paste. So you say V and hold down control, you just click there and, you know, you, you'll do that. Or you can, you can make that key do, to do some changing of layer, or you can make that key to do keyboard mouse or you can make that key to do keyboard macro you know um, typing text or whatever uh, and or you can make that key to switch 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 layout so you, layout is like profiles you know you can have several profiles so anyway so my point here is that this is a programming keyboard user interface software this is for the ultimate hacking keyboard and uh, the name of this software is UHK agent it's also open source on github you can search for it so this is a great user interface design because i when i used it the first time i don't have to read any documentation or manual at all you know you just open it and you immediately you know what to do okay that's one example the other example i showed is the vial but i don't have it I don't have the expose connected, so I cannot show you. But 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 then the glove eighty, so com com comparatively speaking, the programmability is a, te a bit tedious. Uh, and you have to basically. So let me show you a li uh, in a minute. In a minute, ask questions. Okay, today's uh, your questions. I answer. Uh, but first up, I want to talk about keyboard a little bit. 
Oh, and I also created Grub AT layout for Xaflag keys. I'm gonna show you in a bit, okay? So anyway, to create a layout, you go to this website, uh, enable JavaScript, so turn on JavaScript, so you can now download my layout for Xaflag keys. You can see this key on the right now is it's tab. I changed about three keys. So, you know, so, okay, so, that's Glove AT programmability. So you go to the website, you click the buttons. You, for example, I click this one. Uh, then you can um, wait. Oh yeah, you have to, you you have to turn on JavaScript login. Then you have to, yeah, you have to clone. You have to click clone to edit. So clone it, and then for example, you want to change this key. Then you click, and you know you can edit. You know, let's say make the number five do E type letter E for example. So you go to that website, you can program it. Then you have to click and download the software, build firmware. So it'll take ten seconds. You need to uh, register account, or if you don't want to register account, you have to build a the ZMK software. You know, you can you have to compile it because it's open source. So, but otherwise, you register account, then you change your keys, you click build firmware, then you can save it. You know, you'll automatically save. Then you press some keys on the your glove eighty. Uh, let's go back here. So here is basically what you have to do. You press some keys, then then load the firmware to the keyboard. Okay. So it's a bit tedious, but I heard you know if you want Bluetooth. Open source software as powerful as QMK, ZMK. There's no other. Okay, it, this is uh, about the best you get. Okay, what uh, what questions? Uh, is master stock worth the is master stock worth the effort? Of course, Huang Nguyen, ask something question important. Okay, don't shit talk. Don't it's. <laughs> <laughs> this is not for chat. So the question is: Master stock worth the effort? That depends on you. If you are idiot, you're gonna lose money. But you can buy blue chip stocks. So put it there. Put it there for ten years. Then you'll be good. Okay. That also depends on lots of things. Okay. But I don't suppose that's your question because. <laughs> so hello, Jr says hello. Cause I have a quick question about career advice. What would recommend? A Java software programmer should do if they are lacking some motivation due to stress about finding a good place to earn some money. Uh, what would recommend a Java software programmer would do? Okay, so is I suppose the question is: You are a Java programmer, but you lack motivation. Uh, due to stress or and uh, about finding a good place to earn some money, that's that's that question does not make much sense. Okay, so if you want to program and if if you want to make money, Java it, Java is one of the best language. Java, C, C plus plus, C sharp, Python, JavaScript, for example. And even in uh yeah, and Ruby, you know, these are the top top five most popular languages. So if you want to find a job in any one of these languages, there are tons of it. Okay, so that's a job. Okay, so but your question is, you are a Java programmer, but you lack motiva motivation. Well, get some motivation. You know, you know, maybe maybe programming is not your interest. Then. Maybe you should look somewhere else. I mean, programming you can make a lot of money. It's uh, it's actually the best, almost the best profession you can do that gets you the most money. Okay, in terms of ease and uh, and the, how much money you make and how much effort you have to spend. Programming is the best job. Period. Okay, programming you can you can, if you are smart you can be like a uh, Zuckerberg the scumbag, become a billionaire in five years in three years. Okay, or you can you know, if you are mediocre, 
you know, if you are not too much into, well, you get by. You get a lot of money working in, you know, if you can get Google into Google, you make a lot of money. If you cannot get into Google, you still make a lot of money. Lots of jobs in USA, for example, I'm talking about. So in other countries, that that's depends on the country. You know, I don't know. But, but in USA, you can make a lot of money by being a programmer. You don't have to be a hacker or really like get into something, something, you know, you just be an average programmer, you'll be good. Okay. So if, so your question is you, you want to, you are programming Java, but you don't have motivation. Well, either change your job or suck it, you know, just do your job. That's your job. You, you, that's the job you pick Java programming. You make money. Okay. If you get, if you are, if you cannot find motivation, then quit. It's, it's, it's a matter of choice, okay? That's what I say. Oh my God, so how many keyboards do you use simultaneously? You know, uh, typically just two, you know, on my desktop. So anyway, so back to Glove 80. So keep questions coming, okay? And pay me. You get, uh, you get my better <laughs> answers dedicated to your question. So... So Glove 80, okay, it's a fantastic, okay, uh, uh, but the programming is a bit tedious, but, you know. Okay, so that's about Glove 80. So let me, I want to, uh, so let me talk about random, about other things, okay, so what's the other question? Uh, how many keyboards do you use simultaneously, okay? Emacs settings, Art Mob says, Emacs settings and configuration are often complicated. It's a half GUI arrangement for making the setting easy to get lost. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, of course, Emacs is Emacs is editor such that you have to spend time, at least like three month dedicated study, to master it. But once you master it, basically it's uh, more flexible and powerful than than basically all editors out there. Okay, the price you have to pay is you have to be you have to spend a lot of time and you have to be technical. Okay, but it's gonna be good for 10 years, for 20 years for your life if you are a programmer, okay? That's what I do. So Emacs, we are talking about Emacs, for example, I'm using Emacs soft light keys, XH HTML mod, you know, I can press one key to select, uh, for example, matching tags, you know, expand it, expand it, you know, expand to the above, you know, and also, you know, so and on the pink window is all the commands and keystrokes I call. So you can see I can move by blocks of text up or down. This is supreme, better than page up or page down. So so you can see that command is end of line or block. So anyway, Emacs we are talking about. So that's Emacs. So yeah, okay. So I want to, yeah. So let's go back to talk about keyboard a little bit. So some interesting things okay uh and here is yeah here is glove 80 layout designed for soft light keys okay so you can find it just search for soft light keys okay okay so i and then i want to show you some keyboard news okay mac m1 air macbook m1 air i bought it half a year ago it's fantastic okay so i recommend it and uh, the a apple m1 chip is the best thing you know intel intel is the worst one of the bad company and intel chips you know the it's uh it's a baggage of 30 40 years baggage intel chips worst so apple m1 chip is fantastic okay so I recommended Apple Escape Key. So there's new some new articles about key. As you know, I have a keyboard blog. I study there are 1,000 articles in this keyboard blog right now. And, uh, you know, it's, I've been writing it for the past 15 years. And, uh, you know, so there is a section all about keys. You know, all the keys you want to know. The space key, for example, why is a space bar a bar? Why is it not just a key? So here is a reason in history. <laughs> you know, the reason it's a bar is because uh, the reason it's a bar is because typewriters. Chick, 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 ching, Louis Bohr. Thank you. So 
you know, so I have lots of keyboard articles. So the then there's a big, big fat enter key. You know, there are several standards. Uh, different countries have their different uh, standards. Big fat enter key and the Unicode symbols to, to represent the enter key, or sometimes it's labeled return. For example, on the Mac, the enter key on the main keyboard is labeled return always for the past 40 years. But on Windows, they are always labeled enter, and typically with one of these Unicode symbols. So anyway, I'm talking about you know my blog about all, every aspect about keyboard. And so you got label, then for example, you can in this page you can see all Apple's keyboards in history. You know, Apple Apple keyboards. You know, I was an Apple user since 1990, 1991. You know, so I've been using Apple on and off, you know, for 20 years, more than 20 years. So I, 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 I used lots of these. For example, starting, my first one is this keyboard, okay? Apple Standard Keyboard, 1987. Uh, this is actually not the keyboard I have, but I use it, you know, at work. Anyway. So then the first Apple laptop, you know, this is this is 1989, you know, back then when I, w I was a student, you know, I was I wasn't even in college yet. So I was coveting, oh, you know, this this keyboard. I mean, this, uh, this computer, you know, this is like the best out there. So anyway, the lots of keyboards. So back to my point. So about the return key, then I did a survey on what label and what symbol, what icon, what glyph keyboard use to represent the enter key. So I actually looked at tens of keyboard and here's a, here's a, a result. Basically this, if you are talking about symbols, they use these four symbols, okay? So it's a survey and I show you examples of each usage on the keyboard. And here is Apple keyboard for Russian, you know, so you can see. So anyway, so so this um, it's about different keyboards, right? So yeah, different details about keyboard and stuff. And back to, you know, so the history of each key, shift key, control key, control key position on the keyboard, you know, many of the nerds will say, <laughs> that oh the old keyboard have control bes besides the a that's false okay that's fake news especially emacs idiots emacs fanatics you know they like to claim oh microsoft fucked it up you know the the key to the left of the your pinky should be the control because all the old keyboard are like that that's fake news that's you know they wanna believe the, the these Emacs fanatics. They wanna believe they create fables. It's false. Okay. So here is the article. You can see each of the old Asian terminals. They don't have control. It's not always so. It's actually half and half. Okay. The control key. You know is is not beside A. Okay. So you can check out you know the history of keys. So then there's escape key, for example, the history of escape key. What does it do? Where did, what does it come from? And what, how is it used today on Windows, on Mac, on, you know, on Linux? Linux basically follow, copy everything Windows, okay? <laughs> so whatever the key do on Windows, Linux copy it, like stealing, okay? That's an open source fanaticism. Okay, so... So what I'm saying is that so there's also compose key, old graph, and dead key. What's the difference, and so on, and which one should you use? They basically they do the same thing. Okay, so you have old graph key. You know, here's the example old graph key on some microsystems keyboard. I I use this keyboard in two around two thousand around year nineteen ninety nine for three years at work. So this is a photo of my keyboard on some microsystems, a Unix system. This is my office in 2001. Pretty big. You don't see this anymore, you know, since the, since about 2000, since about 2010, you don't have this 
office anymore. I had an office this big and two, you know, computers. So 2001. So um, and uh, some microsystems. Okay, that's uh, Unix. Okay, so about keyboard. So uh, the point is that you know I've been working a lot on keyboard and the top key. Uh, very interesting, you know this this keyboard from nineteen sixty three, about nineteen seventy or nineteen sixties. This keyboard is the mother of the command key, the Windows key, okay. Because of the Meta key, this is the keyboard that began the Meta key, okay. Then eventually it evolved into Apple's command key. Then Windows in 1992 or 1993, they kind of copied. They they made it into the Windows key. Okay, they all originated. The first very idea is from this Lisp keyboard, the Meta key. In fact, this is actually not even a Lisp keyboard. This keyboard is the the son of this keyboard. <laughs> okay, so this is a cell keyboard at Stanford Artificial Intelligence Research. By John McCarthy, you know the creator of Lisp. Anyway, so speaking of artificial intelligence, we are you know there's a lot of chat API going on today. It's incredible. Okay, that's a society changing right now this year. Okay, so anyway, keyboard news. So I want to、uh, say something about so、uh, you know you can read my articles.、Um, keyboard keys. Okay, and I bought a electric shaver. I'm gonna answer your question、uh, now. So electric shaver, I bought this one because my old one died. You know, I had one that's fifteen years old. So I bought this one, forty dollars, fifty dollars. Fantastic. Okay, so you can use this to shave your balls, shave your cock. Okay, shave, shave, <laughs> shave, <laughs> shave your penis. This one. So I did some research. What's the difference between the ball shavers? You know, dedicated ball shavers, men. Manscape or something, you know, there are quite a few. What's the difference between those and uh, just the、uh, average trimmer? Apparently, there's no difference. You know, they just put the label "ball shaver," then they can add forty dollars to the price tag. So anyway, I bought this one. It's a、uh, fantastic. Okay,、uh, I don't have much beard. I don't have beard. You know, as an Asian Chinese guy, I don't have beard. So. My own, I only have some mustache and、uh, you know chin goatee. I don't shave much. Once a month, basically, and I all I do is just mop it, mop using the electric shaver, mopping around my mouth for basically one minute, and that's it. That's done. So this is fantastic. Okay, electric shaver and、uh, then Hyper Seven keyboard. Now this is you know this this is inspired by Lisp keyboard.、Uh, Inspired by the Space Cadet keyboard, you must have heard if you are an Emacs user or Lisp programmer. Space Space Cadet, okay. So and this key, and uh, and uh, the so it's got hundred eighty three keys, hundred eighty three. You know, fuck the forty percent keyboarders. <laughs> it's a Spite of the forty percent nerds, I don't like forty percent keyboards. Okay, so uh, and uh, the point and here it's what's new is this keyboard is expensive four hundred dollars five hundred dollars you if you want it, and、uh, but what's new is that this great guy, Quiosan twenty two Thomas, you know he did a review, his review is always good. You know he. He got this keyboard and he did a review of it. Hyper Seven, okay. So let's see what's the question. Your thoughts on Haskell usefulness for general purpose difficulty? Perhaps a little history or alternatives appreciated. Okay, so Haskell, you know, I have a actually I started to learn Haskell. You know, I I know about you know I'm a big fan of functional programming since nineteen nineties because Wolfram language, Wolfram language. Then is my first language. I programmed Wolfram language for.、Um, okay, so let me let me let me talk about Haskell. Okay, so I programmed Wolfram language for for most of nineteen nineties before before I know what's what is what is a 
networking. I don't know anything about computer. Okay, I'm I'm mostly a mathematician. So in the 1990s, beginning in 1992, I was I was a student of of mathematics. Okay, because I want to be, I'm ambitious. I want to be the greatest mathematician. Among other things, I wanted to be also the the billion millionaire and the pianist and the, also the greatest juggler, but things didn't turn out that way. Okay, so so Mathematica. So you can see. So let's you know I have tons of articles on Mathematica. Uh, so let me show you you know the the things I I want to talk about. So you can look at my Wolfram language tuto tutorial. Um, then you have uh, Wolfram language and this. Okay, so for example, I wrote an article about my impression of Lisp from coming from Wolfram language from Mathematica. It was known as Wolfram language. I mean, it was known as Mathematica. Mathematica is a product, but the language is called Wolfram language, starting around two thousand fifteen or so. So anyway, so. Um, yeah, so this this topic I talked a lot. In fact, so Wolfram language and Lisp. Okay, so anyway, in the nineteen nineties, I'm a Wolfram language expert. Okay, so you can say that this article I posted recently about my impression. But anyway, let's let's get back to the Haskell question. Okay, so my first language is Wolfram language. I read the book. You know the thick Wolfram Mathematica book three times, cover to cover in different years. So I'm, I'm a master of Wolfram language, and I went to work for them, uh, for for a bit for a while. So and in nineteen ninety five, okay, and uh, then so Wolfram language is basically Lisp and APL, okay. That's the that's the inheritance. That's a heritage, okay. Wolfram language is basically. Basically, a combination of Lisp programming language and APL. APL is basically array-based programming language. You can, if you don't know APL, it basically is any function works on an array. In most other languages, any function works on a string. You know, one argument of string or number, and it returns a string or a number or or you know, most languages. But in array-based programming language. Which APL is an example. You don't, you don't, you, you know, argument are usually just a list array, okay? So the argument are typically either a list array, you call it array, or a multi dimensional array, two dimensional array, or three dimensional, or four. So every value is array. So when you call a function, you know, f something, that argument is almost always an array. So the function basically Applies to the every element in the array. That's what array programming means. Okay, so that's what APL is. Okay, APL language. Uh, you know, I have like one million articles. Um, so the the question is, do I want to show it? Uh, because if I show everything. Uh, so APL. So let me just show a few. Okay, so APL language. Uh, click on that. Yeah, so. Uh, you know, called APL symbol. So these are APL programming language. You know, they APL stand for a programming language. It also uses these uh, mathematical characters. Today it's Unicode. Okay, so this is the the first original APL keyboard. It's IBM twenty seven forty one printing terminal. That's the first APL computer. It's not a computer. It's just a terminal. Anyway, this is. What how it started APL, so anyway, Wolfram language is a synthesis of Lisp and uh, APL. Okay, so here's the APL symbols, basically functions and operators and what they mean. Okay, and here uh, Wolfram language is a synthesis of Lisp and uh, APL. So in every way, Wolfram language is Lisp. Okay, nested, you know, basically nested, but using a using a square bracket instead of Parenthesis, you know, I talked about this. Watch my video. I have like two or three dedicated video on Wolfram language and Lisp. Okay, so and APL, you know, and uh, as as you know, Lisp is a functional programming language. Okay, and uh, APL is also a functional programming language. Okay, so 
Wolfram language is synthesis of APL and Lisp, Lisp and APL plus mathematics plus you know Wolfram you know Stefan Wolfram's um, basically what you call um, computer algebra system. That means you can use a programming language to solve equations. You just you know you 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 have a function called solve, then type an equation as an argument and you spit out the solution. Uh, you can solve linear algebra, matrix equations, differential equations, partial differential equations, systems of linear equations, or systems of arbitrary equations, or logic equations, you know, lots of equations involving and or not, you know, true and false, lots of equations, you know. So let's call, or, or you know, solve equations. So that's called computer algebra system. So that's what Wolfram language is. Lisp programming language, APR programming language, and computer algebra system. That in short, you know, that's basically what Wolfram language does. And it's a term right as far as the characteristics of the language, how does it do computation? It's called term rewriting system. Okay, you don't see that anywhere. Uh, there's no example of such in the common programming languages, not Golan, not Haskell, not Erlang, not OCaml, not Camel, not Meta Language, not, not anything. Term rewriting system is basically unique. There, there, there are other examples, but, but for example, it's called Q and Pure. You can look up Wikipedia. That's term rewriting system, but basically it's esoteric, more esoteric than Haskell. You don't hear it. So term rewriting system, basically Wolfram language, okay? But my point, okay, so my point is that my my first seven years is Wolfram language, it's, and it's all functional programming. Be and because of the similarity to Lisp, and because Lisp is known in AI, which is uh, artificial intelligence research, throughout 1980s, it's all written in Lisp. So I have a strong interest in the, in the beginning, in my beginning career with functional programming. So that's how I got into Emacs. I got to in the eventually Emacs Lisp and, uh, you know, but the, the main thing about them is functional programming, you know, th because I'm, I'm kind of uh, strange. I don't, I, I didn't go to college more uh, kind of, so I don't have the traditional programmer's background, you know, usually you go to college or you started young, I didn't, okay, so anyway, I began because I'm a mathematician, I want to be a greatest mathematician, and I'm also interested in computers, so I want the best tool, so I started to, you know, so there's a Wolfram language best tool for mathematics, I don't know what is functional programming, I don't know what is the different types of, you know, I don't know what is, you know, so, I bought Mathematica and I started to read the manual word by word, cover by to cover, you know, so I became a master, uh, master of it. But then it's very different from the industrial programming language like Unix, C, Grab, like what the fuck, what the fuck are those? You know, that's my beginning impression. <laughs> so I started to, you know, so anyway, back to the point. So. Functional programming is what I love, but you don't see that. In this is this. Remember, this is in nineties. Okay, functional programming did not become kind of mainstream. Like most people have no idea. Like the C, C, C plus plus Java, they don't know. They don't know what this, what it is. Only until about two thousand ten, functional programming started to become popular because JavaScript, for most of all, JavaScript. Okay, JavaScript and then Haskell, a little bit Haskell, okay? Functional programming, because JavaScript, because JavaScript is based on Scheme Lisp. Scheme Lisp is one of the best functional programming language. You know, so functional programming is what I'm into. But the, when you look at industrial programmers, in this, you know, they don't know nothing about it, especially back then. So I started, of course, so I, you know, back then, so I, I know about Haskell, or Camel, meta language Camel, which or Camel came from, and F sharp. Then you know there's Miranda. Miranda is a commercial functional programming language, and Erlang. So I started to look into them. I started to try to learn Haskell, but I failed. You know, so you can find my Haskell tutorial 
back in the day. I tried to learn it, you know, 2005, Kassas has got tutorial, like one has got a day, you know, that's, you know, I, the, the goal was to learn, you know, one hour, just read about whatever about has got one hour a day and be persistent. That didn't go anywhere. Uh, I end up, you know, didn't learn much. So I, you know, so that failed. And, and remember, this is back in 2005. It's very different from today. Today, if you want to learn Haskell, there's lots of resources, 1,000 YouTube and, uh, and practical too. But back then, when you want to learn Haskell, it's academic jargons. The first problem they want to do is solve derivatives, <laughs> derivative of mathematics. <laughs> like most programmers, you don't know what is derivative even. But it's different today. So back then, I tried to learn it. It didn't go anywhere. So, and my point here is that I know about Haskell, you know, back then, you know, since 1990s, there's lots of FAQs. Before Wikipedia, there's FAQs. So anyway, so, so, so I, I was a fan of the pure, you know, the, of the, pure, you know, I was, I was most, I, I was kind of, uh, I'm always into well-designed languages. So back then I was very much a fan, a wannabe, you know, a fan wannabe of Haskell because of the, all the mathematical properties of Haskell because no effect, you know, mo no effect and lazy evaluation, which from a ap academic point of view, that means the ability to have infinite list number of items, infinite list, okay, lazy evaluation, and lots of other properties, you know, no mutation, uh, you know, but <laughs> actually, I never learned much of it, but I create, I was a, a fan, wannabe, so I created this, for example, logo, Haskell logo, I created this logo, for example, you can grab and use, and all this symbology i i love symbols as you know unicode symbols and what each of these symbols mean okay so uh and there's a collection of other haskell logos you know for example this one is dead for 10 years yeah haskell project you know back then it's a academic you don't it's not like today so and then you have the early haskell compiler logo hux 98 then also the original haskell logo then this one, a new one, is also dead. Today is, of course, this one, 2009. So 2009 is actually the year Haskell kind of revived all of a sudden because of the CPU. You know, CPU don't get faster anymore, so you started to have cores, you know, dual core, multi-core, and uh, functional programming kind of, uh, it kind of helps it kind of promotes functional programming because you don't have you don't have shared states that makes parallel computing parallelism much simpler so anyway so 19 2009 is about the time haskell got a revival haskell is pretty old haskell is from 1990 so um 90 1989 or early 1990s okay from it's a it's created by a committee of acad academicians in in academia. Okay, so it's pretty old. But two thousand nine is the time it got a revival and it began to be used by the industry industry coders. It's used in Facebook, you know, and uh, and other companies, you know, other for commercial enterprise companies. So, but. I, so, but myself, I actually just never learned it. You know, after two thousand five, you know, started for a few months, didn't go anywhere. I just didn't learn it. Then I also started to learn OCaml. Uh, and OCaml is actually got me far, much further than Haskell. Okay, so a bunch of um, so let 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 me go to the let me search for the OCaml. Okay, so let me show you. Uh, so yeah, so uh, here is a logo design for programming. Let's search, okay, or camel. So I also have a kind of a semi tutorial uh, on or camel and several articles. For example, history of a camel and Haskell syntax. Uh, camel syntax sucks. Or camel tutorial. There it is. Or camel by example. 
So here are several articles. This is uh, Camel Books and F Sharp Books I collected back in 2010. Uh, by now, those books are all bad by now because they are outdated. So F Sharp is a derivative of, of, of Ocamo. It's basically just Ocamo with uh, some syntax changes, okay? And uh, then uh, the most famous Ocamo promoter is this guy, very smart guy, Yaron Minsky, okay? He is working at Jane Street trading trading stocks, okay? Uh, am I still going? Am I, guys, say something, okay? Am I making sense? 14 people watching, fantastic, wow. I have 14 people watching, uh, relatively sizable today. Okay, so Ocamo, greatest promoter is this guy, Jane Street, okay? And then the this article, Ocamo official tutorial suck. It tr truly sucks donkey, donkey ass, you know? Here you have Ocamo's official tutorial, okay? And then here's a you know passage. Ocamo doesn't have a basic unsigned integer type, but you can get the same effect using native int. As far as I can tell, Ocamo doesn't have single precision floating point numbers at all. <laughs> you have this passage in official uh, official Ocamo tutorial. Like what the fuck? I'm reading official programming. You know official Ocamo tutorial. And it's telling me he doesn't know what he's talking about. That's the situation. That's, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if they change, but that's the state, you know, Ocamo. But however, you know, and, and, and you know, it, it's pretty idiotic, you know, the, you know, the documentation, you know, documentation in programming industry is pretty lousy. It's bad all over. You know, Python is the worst. Python and Unix man page, fuck. That's the worst shit possible. But the, 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 the interesting thing is that, that these Python people and Unix fanatics, when they, they don't agree, they think it's the best thing. Unix man page, incomprehensible, and they, they, they are thrilled by it. <laughs> That's the situation. They don't know the pro industrial programmers. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what is technical writing. They don't. They they can't. Their brain just wired. They they are incapable, of, and they don't know. They can't recognize real good good technical writing. Okay, that's another topic. I have tens you know tens of articles on technical writing and documentation. Anyway, so another article about Ocamo and Haskell. This is where Haskell and Ocamo's their syntax came from. Their syntax is very similar, but but, but it sucks. Okay, it's a EDR. It's the most Ocamo and Haskell syntax. Both Ocamo is worse. Okay, but they are similar. They are the, in the same category. Their syntax came from this paper by this P. J. Landon, supposedly a hotshot back then in the nineteen sixties. Okay, this is written in nineteen sixty five. The next seven hundred programming languages by P. J. Ladin. He's a hot shot back then. I don't know what he did actually. So I tried to read it. It's incomprehensible. It's a idiotic write writing. Okay, he he, he it, it, you know this guy don't know how to write. Okay, but you know it's like jumbled. You know very confusing. But for some reason I don't know the history exactly. He, this guy is a big shot. But I read I read Wikipedia. I, I don't know what he has done. Anyway, he at least, you know, maybe he's what you you might say, you know, hot shot. You know, like today, you have several celebrities. You know, they talking about things, and uh, every day is on Hacker News. You know, that that's kind of like that. After ten years, it's nobody remembers. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, the today's hot shot. Whatever you are, the hot shot guys you are following on Twitter or Hacker News. You know. Idiots, so I think this this guy is probably one of such. But anyway, back then he's uh, very popular and influential. So because of this paper, that's how Haskell and Ocamo syntax came to be. Okay, I think it's idiotic. Actually, I should finish reading this paper because I tried to read it. It's it, it's like pretty idiotic. Okay. So anyway, this article is about the syntax of Haskell and Ocamo. Okay, so then, and then, um, then Ocamo syntax sucks. This, this is, this is 
I try to explain why it sucks. Okay. Uh, okay. So and here is my tutorial. So the point I want to make here is that I spend about let's say two months studying a camel, and I also spend two or three months, in fact, ten years. Um, want to believe Haskell. But in the short time, I learned much more of Camel. Okay, oh, Camel is so. Here's the point. Here's the answer, uh, Luis, to your question. I don't like Haskell. Okay, I, you know, I don't like Haskell. Despite despite I have like ten years, really truly, I truly want to believe it, because my kind of my purity and academic preferences. I prefer mathematical properties for ten years. For 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 you know ten. For about ten years, I truly want to believe Haskell, and、uh, it's just no good. Okay, Ocaml on the other hand is the quiet programming language. Okay, quiet. Nobody you know talk about it much, but Ocaml has lots of well-known programs written in it. For example, almost all the math proof systems, Cog, Hol, are all written in Ocaml, and、uh, the Unison. The file sync syncing tool are、uh, also written in Ocaml, and、uh, E Donkey did. Someone just mentioned E Donkey, the most popular、um, point to point file file sharing system is also written in Ocaml. So lots of things are done in Ocaml quietly. Okay, nobody you know. But Haskell since two thousand nine, every idiot is talking about Haskell. Every fucking idiot despise. Despise them. That's my opinion. <laughs> It's my personal opinion. So today, I have a lot of things to do. You know, I want to study neural networks much more, differential geometry much more, and type theory, proof systems, the 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 mathematical, not the programming. You know, I despise everything Haskell people say about proofs about type theory. Shit. Okay, take that from me. Anything you hear about type. Type th- proofs about proof theory about type systems. If they are from if they are a programmer from the Haskell, you know they are programmer background from Haskell. It's pure shit. Okay, that's how much I despise the Haskell. You know, I want it to. You know, it's, it's no good. Okay, so if you are a programmer, if you are if you are a programmer, you like functional programming and you prefer some kind of more pure. I would highly, I much more recommend Ocaml than Haskell. Okay, I just want to express my, you know, my my. I don't like Haskell. Okay, I don't like Haskell. You know, then I keep asking questions about people who have experience in both. I just I don't like Haskell, and the lazy evaluation. You know, since. You been you know I've been looking at Haskell for you know since the nineteen nineties like dribbling about oh it, this is great this is you know mathematical but but now I'm old after thirty years of knowing about programming languages in detail in various you know studies Haskell lazy evaluation lazy evaluation is no good okay you don't want a programming language with lazy evaluation okay that's my opinion. <laughs> Lazy evaluation is no good. In fact, XML, you know, the DOM object document object model, they have lazy evaluation, which which is complex, hard to understand. It's no, it's no good. Okay. So anyway, so I must also add, I don't know actually Ocaml or Haskell that much. Okay, I don't know them that much. I don't haven't actually read write some sizable program. Uh, so. You know, just take it. You know, it's just my opinion. You can disregard. I just don't like Haskell. Okay. Now, if you there are language, you know, so I have lots of things to do: differential geometry, neural networks,、uh, machine learning, different approaches. Besides, you know, neural network. There's also symbolic logical approach, which I'm more more interested. Proof theory. So I want to study. Uh, homotopy type theory from the mathematician point of view, not from any fucking programmers. You know,、uh, oh, this is type theory for programmers. Those, those are shit. Okay, anything about type theory, if it came from programmer, 
I regard it as pure shit. I don't want even to 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 just see what it's saying. You know, that's how I regard it. Okay. I hope you um, agree with. I mean, I you know, that's my opinion. I think it's a good opinion. You know, I don't want. So anyway, so yeah, so but there are several programming languages I might want to learn. So OCaml is one. I you know I've I've been thinking Haskell, but <laughs> OCaml okay, not Haskell. OCaml has several variations today. There is OCaml in JavaScript syntax, for example, called um, they keep changing names, but um, you know you can search it OCaml in JavaScript, you, you'll find it. Okay, uh, so there are several syntax variations, and uh, then okay, besides OCaml and Haskell for consideration, I also, for example, Julia is a language I really think is great Julia okay Julia is a mathematical language uh, functional very functional Julia okay Julia or camel I would be uh, if I'm going to learn a new language Julia and or camel I would be much more interested and also Erlang or Erlang derivatives you know there are a few Erlang so because Erlang has this um, uh, uh, different property uh, kind of unusual than all the then OCaml and Haskell because Erlang focus on this, 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 this parallel virtual machine, uh, actor based model. So it's not just functional programming, but it has this kind of uh, parallel programming system to go with it. So that's Erlang. So that that I'm interested in. Erlang is another language that's quiet. Okay, you don't hear. Phonetics talking of fanboys talking about it all day and night, like the Haskell and Rust idiots. You know, Haskell and Rust is like the fanboys is talking, dribbling all day and night everywhere. It's idiots. But OCaml and Erlang, they are used in industry, tried and true, okay, proven. And uh, it's no, it's, it's not just toy industry, you know, the stocks, for example, we talked about the Gen. gen Street doing stocks, and uh, the Erlang is used in telephony. You know the cell phone industry heavily, and OCaml is used in mathematical proof systems. Cog, C O G, the programming language C O G, C O Q. Okay, Cog and uh, and several others. Okay, they are all most most of them are written in OCaml. Okay, so that's my opinion about it. Uh, non-trivial, non okay. This you getting into the foundation of mathematics, serious mathematics, okay. So when I saw your comment, you know, you started to you you know you haven't heard of Wakamo much, and you started to learn Haskell, and I was disappointed. <laughs> I was disappointed. Okay, that's it. I think that's it for today. Um. Yeah, so cog, I really want to, I want to learn. I need just I need to so many so you know so much things to learn, um, and I don't have much time. You know, neural network by itself it is just gonna take years, and uh, differential geometry and type proof systems, proof theory and type theory, which is part of proof theory. So those subject I really want to get into. So as for programming languages. Mm, you know, I, I, I got other things. We, we, you know, I so much want to learn programming language. It's fun, I, and I can start right away, but that's not... If you really think about, for me, for example, what's more important? You know, not learning another functional programming language is not really important. That, that, that would be a trap that I will fall into, probably. You know, maybe maybe after a few months I started to do a cam or camel or Julia. That would be a trap for me. That would be a waste of time. You know, the the more important is get into the proof th proof theory, neural networks and stuff. Uh, okay, that's that's it about it today. Uh, anything else? Um, so how long have I been talking? Three. Okay, one hour. So just one hour. Um. So yeah, so that's it. Um, what else? Let's see. Okay, that's it. I think we 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 shut down in a minute.
Thank you, Luis. Okay, thank you. So thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna just do Emacs and paste the links here. And so I can like copy, uh, wait, what? Undo, undo, okay. Back, copy here, paste back here. Close, copy, paste, so all keyboard markers you see I'm using history of OCaml syntax and Haskell syntax. OCaml syntax sucks. Yes, it does. OCaml tutorial, my lousy tutorial. It's probably not good today. So I wrote, you know, a few tutorials <laughs> 13 years ago, OCaml. I didn't go far. Uh, okay, close that. Haskell logo, that's interesting. Copy it, make a link, show in browser. So that's good. Close Haskell logo, close IBM. So this is the first terminal for APL programming language. Okay. APL symbols, let's paste it. Okay, APL symbols and APL symbols meaning and code examples. Lisp and Mathematica. Okay, my favorite language. Okay, uh, Mathematica. Wolfram Research, Glove 80, okay, Glove 80 keyboard. <sighs> yeah, so much to learn. And uh, yeah, you know, the AI, the chat GPT is incredible, um, but there's a lot to talk about that, you know, because some, some people will say, you know, because it's one of the fad, kind of, you know, everyone is talking about chat GPT or AI, you know, then you will say, somebody say, oh, it's gonna, it's gonna change the world, it's gonna, we're gonna have a AGI, artificial general intelligence, meaning basically, it has a mind of its own, it becomes, it becomes a man, basically. So, oh, we're gonna have that then there'll be naysayers. They'll say, oh, you worry too much. Actually, it's nothing going to happen. You know, then there's, there'll be people saying, oh, it's going to program us. You're going to have going to be jobless <laughs> next month. So I have my opinions too. But, but I, you know, so I think my opinion is superior than theirs. Even, even those, you know, Forgive me for saying, even those are professionals, you know, pro professors, in fact. <laughs> well, because, you know, opinions, you have to know a lot of things to have really solid opinions. Anyway, I'm just talking bullshit. Uh, but that's, you know, that's indeed a very interesting topic. I think AI is really going to have a major impact comparative to, for example, in the scale of, for example, the invention of smartphone, which essentially changed society to some significant way. It changes, change, it changed how we live. Smartphone, for example, when you drive, now in USA, for example, everyone is using maps, you know, the Google Maps drive and the way how you do things and also changed a new generation who don't know much of anything anymore. They, <laughs> they you know, so signif so so the smartphone had a significant impact on humanity. Okay. And the the one thing before that is even greater is internet. Internet. You know, you know, for example, without internet I wouldn't be doing live stream. And in fact I'm doing live stream that's also because the smartphone. Because it is a smartphone where everyone, not just programmers, not just nerds, but everyone's got it and everyone can do stream live. So smartphone is significant impact to society. So when we say, when I say, you know, AI is, oh, it's going to be a major change, you have to do some comparatively speaking, the context. So what I'm saying is that in my opinion, my just my own opinion, AI is very significant, 
Okay, you hear some people say, "Oh, it, it's, it's nothing. It's like nothing happened." No, I think, in my opinion, I think it's as significant as the smartphone, and、uh, far more.、Uh, depending on you know how many years you want to wait, I think it's far more. And whether it's gonna become a man. You know, out of it, AGI, so so called AGI or so called strong AI, meaning that basically it becomes a、uh, self conscious. Nobody knows, okay? Nobody knows will that happen or not. You know, some people will say, "Oh, it's gonna come in soon," but actually, we don't know. We don't know if it if that's possible at all. But in any case, I think there's a significant impact coming. And 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 right away you can touch it, you can feel it. You know, the, in fact, it's already changing Twitter, for example, because in a few months everything will be bots, and you can and you cannot tell. So Twitter, Elon Musk, they started to、uh, make you know, kind of make sure that you have to pay because if you pay, there's much significant you know, then you cannot have. You know AI bot farms. You know that would be very expensive. That that would less likely to happen. So you can actually trust any people who reply to you, or any people you come in contact on social network, any website. How do you know it's not a bot? You don't know. Actually, you would you wouldn't be able to tell in the coming month that we that's already like happening. Okay, you wouldn't be able to tell. So there's a significant change going on because now. All the website is about to change, something like that. We don't know exactly what yet. So Twitter is now, you know, Elon Musk is starts starting to say, so you have to pay. That that's one way to prevent that from happening. So anyway, so anyway, bye guys.